Hello, my name is Dr. Jeff Kim, and welcome to EDAD 510 Instructional Leadership and Assessment. I have a question for you. What does a great educational leader look like to you? I know one of the reasons many of you decided to pursue this program is because you want to make a difference as an educational leader. And much of that work includes being an instructional leader. So I hope by the end of this semester, you're going to say, oh, wow, I've really grown in being an instructional leader. I've really grown in my instructional leadership. And the way that we're going to do that is through four major assignments, which I'm going to call the big four. I'm going to go through them quickly, and then I'm going to go into more detail one by one by one. So number one, a biweekly vlog and four responses worth 30% of your grade. Number two, a mentoring log and reflection worth 10% of your grade. Number three, leading a community of practice worth 40% of your grade. And lastly, supporting teacher growth worth 20% of your grade. All right, let's look at that first one, which is a vlog. First is a bi-weekly vlog with four responses to others. So this idea of sense-making, framing, and communication, these are all critical for school leaders. So after each week, there's going to be a, some readings that you do and you're going to be reflecting. And over the course of two weeks, as you've done this, you're going to have an opportunity then to communicate what it is that you are learning. When you think about great educational leaders, they are effective communicators. So each of your vlogs um, need not be longer than four minutes. So up to four minutes or about four minutes in length. And you need to include a quote of the text that you've been provided. Uh, and then just describe to you what it says to you, what it means to you, and why it matters. My hope is that as you create this blog, you're making this beneficial to you because you're growing in talking about something that you that matters to you. Uh, then you're gonna use any type of recording to link it to the Padlet. So you may use Screencastify, you may use your camera, whatever it is that you use, or a YouTube link, link that to the Padlet. That way anyone can click on it and see your video. And in our course, you're going to have a chance to see others share their vlogs, their reflections. And I think uh, it's going to be so powerful as you listen to others in your class as well. So for each of these vlogs, these bi-weekly vlogs, you're creating a post and you're responding to four. Now those four responses don't need to be a video recording and audio recording is um, fine. A responses should be thoughtful and reflective and appreciative. Uh, in general, I like to be a little bit more positive in my responsive uh, responses to others when working with other educators. I'm sure we've been in fields, we've been in work with people, and um, it, we, I think we thrive when we work with people who are positive and can catch us doing the right thing. So knowing how to communicate in that well, that way is just so important. And so that's how uh, the vlogs are going to be uh, working about 30% of our grades, but at the end of it, my hope is that it would help you develop the skills that you want to grow in to be that instructional leader. Uh, the second piece is a mentoring log and reflection. So uh, I, I, do you have a mentor? I think most of us have a mentor. You've been doing these mentoring logs and um, that has been a part of your leadership uh, preparation that you have been um, doing already. So having that regular meeting schedule, I think that uh, it helps when you summarize uh, your interactions, like what it is that uh, you learn from that experience. Um, also, you document plans, your plan for future action and growth. I highly recommend you choose a mentor, not just to get this assignment done, but rather think of this as like kind of a way of being. Maybe you're going to do this beyond um, this course. So try to find somebody that you respect, that you like spending time with, that likes spending time with you, that um, is in a position uh, that maybe you want to be in one day, or is somebody that you can learn from really well. All right. So make this work for you. Now, this is the bulk of the course. We have the vlogs, we have the mentoring log and reflection. And then a big chunk of the course is leading this community of uh, practice. Now, this is where you're putting like um, the pedal to the metal. This is where you're actually doing the work, right? So we could theoretically talk about being an educational leader, instructional leadership, but the actual instructional leader, they're in the trenches working with folks. And this is one of those assignments that's going to 
really gets you in there. Uh, leading that community of practice. Some people have called this like leading a professional development or leading a grade level team or leading a focus group or leading a task force or leading a professional learning community, a PLC. So I've heard it said in many ways, we're just gonna call it community of practices for the purpose of this class. But this is what uh, great leaders do. And uh, by the way, before I, I talk about um, you, uh, you as a future educational leader, I want you to know that you are an education leader right now. Whatever role you're in, uh, I could tell you, you can be that educational leader. I've seen many teachers, in fact, be great in, uh, instructional leaders on their campus. Uh, educational, you don't have to wait. This is something that you can do now. You can be the one volunteering uh, to lead this community of practice. Now, for the purposes of this class, yes, it's an assignment, but uh, outside of this course, this is what instructional leaders do. They're oftentimes leading many, many different communities of practice. Anyways, let's talk more about this community of practice. Um, it's facilitating, once again, that professional learning experience. Uh, you're gonna have about three to five other educators uh, for the purpose of improving uh, teaching and student learning. I mean, that's the work of the instructional leader, improving teaching and student learning. So. Uh, we'll follow that cycle of inquiry, which begins with investigating whatever it is, once again, that you're interested in improving whatever teaching practice you want to improve or student learning that you want to improve. You're investigating that. You're making a plan, a plan. You're acting upon it. And then you're reflecting upon what it is that you did, which then allows you to take the next step once again. So you're identifying a problem of practice and then selecting an evidence-based approach for working together to strengthen and increase equitable learning opportunities for all students. So part of this will include facilitating that group and then reflect and then writing about what it is that you did. But perhaps just as important is, you know, you reflecting on how things went and also your group's feedback upon your fa facilitation and um, your ability and your impact in supporting that professional learning uh, of that community practice. Well, so once again, you're documenting this, so you'll see it, how it says memo one, memo two, memo three. That's basically you, and there's gonna be a template that I provide, which provides a way for you to document all these meetings to show what it is that your group, your uh, community of practice is doing. And then at the very end of this, closer to the end of the semester, you're kind of looking back at all those meetings on that area that you wanted to make a difference in, and you're kind of writing a reflection. Um, it could be a five-page paper, uh, actually for this course, it's a five-page paper, a community practice written reflection. However, you know, I'm kind of toying with the idea in my mind, like maybe a 15-minute Google slide presentation with screencasts with the audience in mind being like a, a conference or something like that on a promising practice. Uh, I'm, I'm playing with that idea. So five-page paper or this uh, Google slide presentation or maybe um, you know, giving you the choice. You choose how you want to show what you know. So uh, I'll, I'll be looking forward to some more of your thoughts on that. And then finally, the last portion of this course will be, so this is the, of the big four, number four, supporting teacher growth. This is where 20% of your grades. So in this case, you're identifying a volunteer that wants to work with you and you're going through that full uh, coaching cycle, which includes you know, the pre-observation meeting where the teacher identifies and shares with you an area that they want to grow and focus in. And then of course, the classroom observation where you're in there and able to see and provide feedback on what it is that um, the teacher was requesting information to grow in. And then the post-observation meeting, and then kind of just talking about uh, that piece as you reflect on uh, strengths and areas of professional uh, growth, uh, and then uh, writing about that piece. So those are the four pieces of uh, instructional leadership and assessment, the big four. And I think uh, as we do these four pieces are regularly, weekly vlogging and reflecting, and then we have that mentor that we're learning from, and we have that mentee that we're supporting, and we have that group that we're working with to change like, uh, you know, a practice to grow in that professional learning uh, for teachers or the outcomes for students. When we're doing these four things, I think there's gonna be a change that happens in the environments that we're working with and also in ourselves, so that by the end of the, for the semester, you're gonna say like, wow, there's a lot of growth that I had. So I really want you to think about that as you do these things, 
not just uh, let me get these assignments done, although I, that's what I'm trying to make it clear for you for to make it easy to get it done. So I do want it to be easy to get done, but that's not the reason why uh, the assignments are made in this kind of clear way. I want it to be so that you can spend deeper time, more time reflecting and thinking about how you can grow and think about areas that you want to grow so that by the end of that uh, first semester, you have grown tremendously and you can be really proud of yourself. I already know that you're gonna grow tremendously. So in advance, I will tell you that I'm proud of you and I look forward to seeing you soon. This is Dr. Jeff signing out.